How's it going and welcome back to their Marvel Snap video here on YouTube. Today's going to be a little bit different than the deck highlights I've been doing. Uh, some data miners dug on into the Android Snap files and dug around to see what they could find. And they found a whole bunch of completely unreleased cards in the game files, including some fantastic artwork like this game has across the board. We're going to go through all of those cards today and not only showcase uh, what they are in the game files, but also give some of my thoughts on them as they could fit into existing decks. It is important to note that because these are unreleased cards, their exact stat lines or abilities might change slightly, but it does give us some insight into some future designs the game might be implementing. And there really are both some fantastic characters in here that are popular Marvel IP characters are surprised weren't in the game in the first wave of cards, but I'm excited to see them coming. And there's also just some fantastic game design things they're doing in general that makes me really excited for the future of Snap as a game. Before we dive into the cards, remember if you enjoy this type of stuff, to like the video, leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite card was at the end. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm putting out Marvel Snap content here a few days a week. So let's go ahead and dive on in here for our first one is the Absorbing Man. So four mana, three power card here says, at the last card you played has an on reveal ability this card copies it. So very similar to uh, Odin in its effect. Uh, this card costs four mana, but the first thing that jumps to my mind is it pairs nicely on curve after White Tiger, which is kind of sweet. Odin is often only triggering a single on reveal effect to big effect. And this notably doesn't even have to be at the same location. You played the previous on reveal card and you could play this on that turn six along with a two mana play as well to get a double card turn going on there on the last turn of the game. Next up, we have Agent Coulson. So three mana, four power card, decent on rate, just at face value, uh, maybe a little bit below average uh, compared to something like Deathlock, but still a decent stat line. And on reveal gives you a random four and five cost card in your hand. So there's going to be some variation with what this generates. The fact that it, this card on three guarantees you to fill out your curve on four and five definitely has some interesting application while also adding some good variety to the gameplay. That's even before you consider comboing with things like Quinjet or the collector that get benefit from you generating cards that weren't in your starting deck. Up next, we have the Black Knight here. One cost, two power. When this is destroyed, draw a card. Uh, the uh, Carnage Nova deck has definitely been struggling in the current format, so giving it another payoff like this will hopefully help it rise to some success in the metagame. We have Black Panther here. So this is definitely a build around combo style card on reveal double this card's power. So things that jump out to me is pairing this with something like say forge. So if you put this card into play with four power and then it doubles up to eight, if you want to trigger it with Odin, you could double it up a second time. So if you know it goes with forge from four to eight, then you Odin it, you can get it up to 16, which is a pretty good stat line on a four mana play. Blink here. You can move this once per turn, and when it moves, it gets plus one power. So, you know, you assume you play this on the third turn of the game. You move it on turns uh, four, five, and six. So you're going to get to move it three times total. So this is a four power, three cost thing that also gives you some flexibility with where it ends up on the board. And perhaps this is a card that could make something like Craven finally be playable or a different move payoff that rewards you for sliding things around the board. That's even before you consider it can slip into places like Nowhere or the Sanatorium that you normally wouldn't want to be deploying cards to. So it seems like good utility here, potentially. We have Blob. Four power, three cost thing. Nothing can move this to another location. The blob gets down, it stays down, apparently. Bull's Eye, one cost, two mana play. On reveal, the next card you draw will be a two cost card if there are any less. This is interesting. So if you have this on one, you could have a single two drop in your deck to guarantee it. You could also utilize this as a way to tutor up a particular two mana bullet. For example, armor is very good in the current Nova Carnage metagame. So this could effectively give you a second virtual copy of armor in your deck to draw that more consistently if armor is the only two mana card that you're playing. Daredevil. 
This design is really awesome, in addition to this being one of my favorite Marvel characters. Two power, two mana cards, so a little bit underrate for that, but on turn five, you get to see your opponent's plays before making your own. Like, knowledge is power, and there's so much that you could do knowing what your opponent's plays are in advance, and five is pretty deep into the game, and getting to make a heads-up play on that turn with, you know, think uh, lining up an Enchantress or a Shang-Chi or Armor or some other pivotal counterplay with something like Daredevil sounds really sweet, a lot of fun. Dark Hawk, one mana, three power. You can only play this at locations where you already have a card. So this is notably a one drop that you cannot play on one unless you're also playing something like Wasp. So if you're going to play this, you want to play it in a deck where you want to fill in a one along your curve somewhere else down the line. Maybe there's some kind of Kazar deck that wants to play this or the Sir Three Bro deck that I played the other day. It's another uh, one mana three power thing that you could fit in two three power things in a single turn. Definitely interested in trying out something like this Dark Hawk card. Dazzler. Four mana, four power. If you have four cards at each location, plus eight power. Really neat build around card. Obviously getting 12 power on a single card, just impressive in Marvel Snap in general. And getting it on a four mana card is nothing to scoff at. Perhaps this card uh, has utility or something like Ultron or Derby or Squirrel Girl, other things that flood the board so you can get 12 cards out before the game ends consistently. Worth noting that this card does have drawback into a number of areas like the Space Throne or Nowhere or the Sanatorium, so not a free roll by any means, but definitely a powerful payoff if you can make it work, it looks like. Elsa Bloodstone, one mana, one power card at the end of each turn if you're winning this location, plus one power. So very likely going to be two power at a minimum because you're going to play it out of a location you'll likely be winning that location on turn one if you play it out then and if you're winning locations all six turns this could theoretically be a seven power one drop although obviously there's counterplay from your opponent there this could perhaps pair very well with cards like the uh guardians of the galaxy that reward you for predicting where your opponent's playing because your opponent's going to be incentivized to play into the path where elsa is and then your guardians will reward you for them having done that Ghost Spider, one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters, and this costs zero if your opponent discarded a card from their hand this game. So the card that immediately jumps out at me with this one is Black Bolt, five, another five mana seven power thing that makes your opponent discard their lowest cost card. This also pairs really well with Moon Knight, that is each player discard a card. So those are two ways you could build to make this a zero mana seven power card, which sounds incredibly powerful with synergy with those two for sure. Thor the Mighty. It was actually leaked that uh, this is going to be the season pass card for next month. So like we'll be able to buy the monthly pass for July and get a copy of this. Ongoing, double this card's power if you have a card that has 10 or more power. Obviously, this works very well with uh, America Chavez, a card that you're guaranteed to draw on 6 that has 10 power, effectively just giving you 10 power plays on 5 and 6 with a really, really good curve. I, I expect this one to see a good amount of play for sure. Jean Grey, three mana, three powers, so a little bit below rate in terms of what she provides to the board, but the next card your opponent plays must be played here if possible. So gives you a little control over positioning on the board, and these types of effects tend to be pretty powerful in my experience. Kitty, uh, Kitty Pride, one mana, two power thing. You can pull this back to your hand at any point. Nothing jumps out at me off the bat as something that's abusable with this, but I'm sure there's some kind of deck building thing that lets this get very silly. Uh, I guess actually uh, there's the two drop that's escaping my name where every time you play a card to her path, she gets plus two power permanently. You could spend a mana on this card into her path every turn to get, uh, get that one plus two power. There's at least one off the bat. Lady Death Strike, six mana, four power card on reveal. Destroy the enemy card with the highest power at this location. So almost always going to be a big swing. You know, usually six power things. American Chavez is kind of the baseline. You want at least 10 power out of them. You're likely destroying an opposing card that has... Uh, you know, six or more power with this. So the amount of swing that this card is going to generate in a path that you play it to definitely seems appropriate for a six drop. Legion, five mana, four power. 
change other locations into this location. This is a really expensive card for managing locations. You know, other location management cards tend to be like Storm or Rhino that costs three or Scarlet Witch that costs one. However, there's one particular location that kind of screws over your opponent's board. This could copy it across all of it, giving you a really cheeky win. You can see this being an, a high variance kind of tech card, but would be surprised if it's a staple. Luke Cage, two mana, one power. Your cards can't have their power reduced. So it kind of protects your board. This could be something that is a bit of a tech card or could be good when there's a hot location that reduces the power of your things at a given location, perhaps. Mabaku, one mana, two power. If this is in your deck after the final turn, it jumps to a random location. I feel like this probably isn't very good. So remember, you have 12 card decks and you see nine of them at a minimum per game, which means that uh, this has to be one of the bottom three cards in your deck for it to jump into play. And the upside of it jumping into play is pretty minimal, just being a two power, two power card for free. Man uh, Makari, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Zero mana, two power. When you draw this card, place it at a random location. Yeah, I can see this being good. You know, free cards tend to be busted in card games, especially ones that have limited resources like Snap. I can see this, I can see this being quite reasonable. Maria, Maria Hill, add a random one cost card to your hand. Yeah, I can see this being fine. Like two, three power for two mana is pretty on rate. It generates you a card, works with the collector, works with Quinjet, and could generate you something meaningful as well, such as an uh, Electra or an Ant-Man to put extra power into play. Mephisto. This design is just absolute gasoline. If you win this game, double your winnings. I assume that means the number of cubes. You can get like 16 cubes for winning the game. However, you also have to have managed to win the game by making your six mana play add zero power to the board other than just generating you more cubes. Really, really interesting design space for sure. High risk, high reward. Mirage, four mana, five power. As you play this card, disguise it as Mr. Fantastic after the final turn, reveal it. Weird. That's that's a heck of a mind game. I Do you not notice that your opponent played a four mana card though? Because Mr. Fantastic is a three mana card. I'm interested to see how that plays out. If there's any indication of what your opponent's playing out that it is or isn't this. Nebula, one mana, one power on reveal. If your opponent played a card here, two X power and put this into your hand. So the first time you hit, it goes back to your hand that is a two power thing. The second time you hit, it goes back to your hand that is a four power thing. And then like you have to play it out a third time. And let's say you miss the third time you spent three mana for a four power thing. So you basically have to hit three times to get it to eight power, and then you'll have spent four mana across multiple turns on something with eight power. So it's an okay stat line, but it's a pretty specific situation that has to come up in. It allows a lot of uh, predicting, and if you miss, you've spent one mana for a one power thing. So definitely seems like a high variance card at a minimum. The Neg Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Definitely learning some Marvel characters from this game. When any card is played here, destroy this card and that card. Weird. I feel like this probably isn't good. Most cards have at least some amount of cheap things in them. It definitely seems like a loose card to be playing into the Nova Carnage meta, but maybe this could be okay in a different meta game. Nick Fury, fan favorite for sure. Five mana, seven power. Add three random six cost cards to your hand. So I like that this and Agent Coulson both uh, kind of fill your later curve out, which is nice. And three random six cost cards gives you a pretty decent range of things to pick from that could be good in different situations. And seven power for five mana is like pretty close to reasonable. Like usually you want like eight or maybe nine, but getting a lot of different six cost value could be, could be reasonable with this card. Orca. So similar effect to uh, whatever the merfolk looking dude is. Namor, I believe. Ongoing five power if this is your only card here. So 14 power for six if it's a singular card. That might 
be okay. I could see it maybe being fine. Namor is a card that's like playable-ish under the right circumstances. I could see this being the case as well. The Red Guardian. On reveal, you must play a card here next turn. So gives you six stats for three mana, which is definitely above rate, but then kind of restricts your play the following turn. Honestly, this is probably pretty reasonable. Get a stat line on it alone makes it pretty decent, I think. Sentry, speaking of stat line, so 10 power for four mana. On reveal, adds a void seven power card to your opponent's side of this location. So kind of only gives you three stats for four if you can't find a way to interface with their void card. I don't, can't think of anything immediately offhand that jumps out at me as something that could synergize with getting rid of a seven power thing or abusing the fact that you gave your opponent a seven power thing, but I'd wager there's something out there that some really smart persons will let me know in a comment down below. The Shadow King, six mana, four power. Destroy all other cards that have two power or less. Uh, this doesn't strike me as particularly playable. Could be an interesting tech card under the right circumstances, but I don't think anything in the game going on right now has that particular circumstance attached to it. She-Hulk, four mana, five power, ongoing. The opponent has a higher cost card here, plus three power. So this is kind of a four drop that you don't want to play on curve, right? Like you realistically want to be playing this kind of on turn six along with like a two drop. So that way you can predictably put it um, in a location where your opponent like already has a five played out. Although I suppose you could also use this proactively in a location where you explicitly don't want your opponent to play out another card. However, it's also only eight power total for the payoff that it gets. So maybe that's not quite worth it for, you know, it being a conditional payoff to begin with. Shuri, four mana, two power, double the power of the next card that you play. So what are, what are the biggest things you can play on five? There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like uh, eight and nine power things. Uh, Red Skull is a 14 power five drop that has a drawback, but his drawback's a lot less bad if you get 28 power out of him. So in theory, you spend like nine mana to get 30 power worth of things with Red Skull. So it seems like a sweet enabler there. In addition to the fact that you could also play Shuri on five and then your six drop, be it Hulk or Chavez or variety of other things could also get bigger. Silk. Either player draws a card, set its cost to six. Okay, the stat line here is a little below rate, but not terrible. And this could be an okay disruptive element against decks that are looking to spam out a lot of cheap things, especially if you're playing a deck that has a lot of top end anyways. Silver Sable. You can only play this at a location where you have six plus total power. So six power for two mana, but not a card that you're ever going to be able to play on two. I wouldn't be surprised if this card finds a home in a deck that's like looking to, you'll probably want to fit this in a deck where you're like playing like two twos on four or like a two and a three on five or like a two and a four on, on six. Um, so definitely de decks that are looking to make multiple plays in those the mid to late turns, I think. The Silver Samurai. When this is discarded from your hand, draw a card. Sweet. I think the discard archetype could use a few more uh, payoff style cards. This is a decent effect for that. That could also just fill your curve on turn one if you don't have something like a blade. Silver Surfer. Four mana, zero power. On reveal, double the power of all six cost cards wherever they are. So this is a double-edged blade. It also impacts your opponent's board and it notably only costs four, which means if you skip your fifth turn, you get that 40 power infinite down somewhere. The question is, is it worth taking turns four, five, and six to do that? Snow Guard. If you haven't played a card by turn three, transforms into a random spirit animal. Oh, we have the spirit animals here. So either a four power, three drop, an eight power, four drop, or a three power five drop. So obviously some of these things are better than others. The power here definitely feels like it's in the fact that you could play this on one, but then if you don't play it by turn three, you could fill your curve with it later with one of these cards. Could see this being playable just because of the flexibility in the right shell. 
Strife. The rate is good here, three mana for seven. If your opponent has 12 plus power here at the end of any turn, destroy this. Okay, that's got some risk attached to it. This is another card that could potentially be good in a deck that's looking to play two cards out on the later turns to kind of have more control over what's going on. I could also see this being good alongside uh, Hobgoblin and Green Goblin cards that move to your opponent's side of the board to reduce their power, so that way they're less likely to hit that 12 power condition to blow him up. Surter. I think this is one of the first cards we have that explicitly references another card. It says here, if you move Human Torch to this location plus 10 power. So kind of a pretty big risk with this one, right? It just like actually does nothing if you don't have Human Torch to pair with it. But if you do, 10 power for 5 mana is a pretty good rate. The Living Tribunal, 6 mana, 4 power. At the end of the game, split your total power evenly among all locations. It's kind of a sweet card. You know, we've seen uh, like total powers that people put into play go absolutely crazy with cards like Iron Man that double it up. And this is a card that would reward you for kind of going all in on a single lane by letting you uh, spread that out and potentially win more of them. Although it's worth noting, it does split it up evenly across all three, which means if your opponent is invested more heavily in just two of them, this could actually end up being worse for you. Thor. Shuffle Molgenair back into your Shuffle Molgenair into your deck. We have a reference. It's a zero mana, zero power card. On reveal, give Thor plus six power. So that's interesting. So we have a six power four drop. That then if you draw, if you draw this down the line you get uh, plus six power. So I guess the question is, what are the odds that you draw this? So let's say you play Thor on turn four. Okay, I didn't realize this might not be formatted nice. So I'm going to pull up my hypergeometric distribution calculator and see what it looks like here. All right, so on turn four, we'll have drawn uh, seven cards out of our deck, meaning there's five left. So then we're going to shuffle in the Molgenir. So there's six total cards in our deck on starting on turn five before we draw. There's one Molgenir, and we want to draw... We're going to draw on turns five and six. So we've got two shots at it. So our odds... Sample size two... Calculator not working. Population size six, one. Sample size two, number of successes... We, this is why this is why we shouldn't add uh we shouldn't do things off the cuff I didn't realize we we're gonna need to do math in here all right i'm sure i don't know why my stat tricks not working at any rate there's six cards we can just wing it right there's six cards you're taking two shots at it so you're one in six and then one in five so your odds of missing are 80 percent and then 76%, so you multiply those years. So you're like about a coin flip to draw your hammer. So you're like 50%. That was much faster than trying to use the Hyper Geo. Small numbers are easy. Uh, you're about a coin flip to get a 12 power forger by this. Could be reasonable. Titania. Five power, one drop. Whenever any card is played at this location, this card switches sides. <laughs> interesting so high risk high reward notable that your opponent could play something there on the last turn to take this card from you however there's also a mind game of if your opponent's going to play something could you also play something if you don't have priority and get it back yeah so like there's this kind of like okay i they could play something here so i could play something here to flip it back but then maybe they won't so interesting levels to this card and that's a lot of power for one man i could definitely see this being a sweet one i think this might be the most flavorful card in the in this this unreleased cards one mana two power card when this card is destroyed and spider-man to your hand oh uncle ben so another payoff for the destroyed deck and definitely a very flavorful card Valkyrie, five mana, three power card. On reveal, set all cards at this location to three power. Interesting. So this could 
potentially be a counter to the kind of Nova decks we've been seeing run around. They don't always Nova on turn six, or if you're expecting them to Nova on turn six and they have priority before you, you could deploy this to one of their locations and set everything there to three. However, I guess it's also noteworthy that all cards in that location go to three power, including yours, meaning you'd need something like a Mr. Fantastic or a Claw or some other way to break that tie or win somewhere else on the board once you tie that location up. War Machine. I feel like this card is probably, I mentioned at the start, there's a chance that these cards end up having a different text at the end. Verbatim, this is just Kazar here from the data mine, so I have to feel like this is probably going to end up being slightly something else. I, I'd be shocked if they release two cards that are identical, sans the name. Yo-Yo, one mana, two power card. When it moves, move it back with plus one power. That's neat. Uh, feels like a, maybe a little bit worse payoff than Human Torch. However, I guess the upside is she always goes back to where she started. So you can't get into situations like your cards that move to the left where you're like all the way on the left and can't move them anymore. So maybe there's more upside there. However, this also only gets plus one power per move, whereas the Human Torch doubles theirs. Zabu, five mana, seven power thing. When this is in your hand, when you discard a card, Put that card back and discard this instead. I feel like there has to be some way to abuse this in the self-discard archetype. I guess this is guarantees you a way to get something back big with Hella or protect other cards in your hand. Although notably, it has a little bit of counter synergy if you're trying to enable something like Swarm. Since this will always be the card that you end up discarding. All right, if you want to look through any of these yourself in the video description down below, I'm going to go ahead and link the snap dot fan page here with the search filter of all of these cards. So you can go ahead and scroll through them yourself. I would just like to mention at the end, I think I misread the name of a card. Uh, this is the Mighty Thor, which is slightly different. I called this card Thor. And there's the other card that we looked at later that I realized afterwards it's actually just called actually just called Thor in here somewhere. That uh, I mixed I mixed those up, but apparently the mighty Thor and Thor are uh, are slightly slightly different uh, slightly different characters, but that's okay. Uh, at any rate, which of these cards are you most looking forward to? Let me know in a comment down below. If I missed anything or overlooked anything, be sure to let me know that as well. Uh, I'd also be interested, are these the types of videos you're interested in seeing on this channel? It's very different from the normal gameplay focused videos that I normally do. I also rambled for a little bit. We've been looking at cards for almost 30 minutes, but I feel like there was a lot of interesting things to say. The core game system in Marvel Snap, I think is super sweet and I'm excited to continue getting cards and exploring more of it. And I'm excited to play with a bunch of these cards at some point in the not too distant future hopefully they told us from second uh second dinner that they plan to eventually start releasing one new card per week and then i assume that's likely on top of the monthly card so maybe four to five new cards a month once they fully get things rolled out however they said they also said that's not going to happen right away so it could be a little while before we see these new cards you know, how many new cards are we looking at here four eight twelve sixteen twenty twenty four uh, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44. Yeah, I mean, there's almost almost 50 new cards here on top of the 170 that we already have in the game. So it put us well over 200 cards. You know, even at one, you know, five a month here, 50 new cards, this is almost like the first year's worth of new stuff potentially that Marvel Snap can have in store for us. And it looks like they're gonna have a lot of sweet stuff. So at any rate, I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with another deck highlight like the other ones have been. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not and you want to see more Marvel Snap stuff from me here.